What does every good COD player have in common? Great aim. Whether you're a pro or just your friendly neighborhood sweat, nothing will lose you more gunfights than having a bad shot. So I've come up with five key insights that I've learned over the years that will hopefully change the way you think about aiming. And stay until the end for a secret aiming tip that no one seems to mention. A few years ago, I couldn't hit a player stuck in the reload animation, let alone a player double jumping into orbit above my head. It was bad, but one thing made all the difference, and that thing is centering. With the instant TTK that comes with Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, you need to get on target fast, really fast, and centering will help with that. Centering is taking the crosshair at the center of your screen and placing it where you expect enemies to be while you traverse the map. A lot of players run around while looking at the ground or with their head in the clouds, which makes a lot of sense as it does feel pretty natural, but centering like this leaves a lot of room for error, as when you see an enemy you have to frantically adjust your aim which will lose your crucial time in every gunfight so you can never land the first shot. So unless you are expecting a zombie to climb out of the ground, you want to be aiming at around chest level and place your crosshair towards doorways and windows where you expect enemies to be. You'll know you're doing it right if when you aim in, you don't have to adjust your aim much to get on target. Because the thing is, in a game where every millisecond counts, you don't want to make aiming any harder on yourself. So focus on centering. But while centering is one of the easiest aiming concepts to understand, I quickly realized that it can be difficult to do consistently in game. As when your focus is split between watching the minimap, listening for audio cues, and utilizing your movement effectively, it can be pretty difficult to focus on centering as you come around every single corner. And this only gets harder when you turn a corner and can be shot from two windows and a guy camping in a bush. Where exactly are you supposed to center? Well, truth be told, a lot of this is learned from experience, but you can make centering a lot easier by utilizing the cover around you to cut off lines of sight as you move around the map, so you only have to focus on centering to one or two locations at once, rather than the whole map. And once I got centering down, I started to see massive improvements to my aim. But I wasn't consistent, because what I didn't realize at first is that to have truly good centering, you need to be able to center onto players. When most players see an enemy, they will immediately aim down sight, before attempting to drag their aim to the enemy, which will mess up your first shot accuracy. And believe me, I was in the same boat for a while. But a better technique is when you see an enemy trying to place your crosshair on their character model before or while you're ADSing. A drill that really helps with this is loading into shoot house with 5 regular or recruit bots while using a deagle class like this. The goal here is to center onto the bot's head before shooting and trying to headshot as many bots as possible before reloading. You don't want to ADS and then drag your aim to their head. You want to be getting your crosshair on target before attempting to ADS as this is what will improve your centering and your first shot accuracy. But all of this takes a lot of fine aim control. So if you're struggling with this, the issue may lie somewhere else. Which brings us to settings, and the elephant in the room when it comes to settings is your sensitivity. Now, while there are thousands of videos on YouTube that showcase the best controller sensitivity, you really need to find what works for you. And that can truly be anything, because there is no single best sensitivity, as everybody's playstyle and gaming setup is different. So depending on if you use tool sticks or a scuff controller, a gaming monitor, or you play on a TV, it will all affect how your sensitivity feels, and therefore will affect your aim. So, like a lot of people, I was stuck, and I couldn't work out how to find the perfect settings for me. But after a lot of trial and error, I've come up with the indisputable, undebatable, and totally accurate guide to finding your perfect controller sensitivity. First, go into your settings and make sure you're playing on a comfortable FOV setting, as people don't seem to realize how much this will affect the feeling of your sensitivity and the size that enemies will look on your screen. I mean, it's a lot easier to aim at this compared to this. Now, there are no real guidelines to setting your FOV, but if you're on a TV or you're far away from your monitor, you might want it to be a bit lower, as you can't shoot what you can't see. But if you're practically playing COD in VR like Jowo, then you should be good on 120. You want to start with a sense you're already comfortable with, and load into shoot house with 5 bots, max reserve ammo, and a hipfire class that looks something like this. And all you want to do is hipfire while trying to focus on hitting the enemy chest, accurately at as many ranges as possible. This is good, as in hipfire you get less aim assist, and your sensitivity will feel slightly faster. So if you feel comfortable aiming like this, you'll be beaming like Biff in no time. 
guy right next to me. Yeah, he's right here. One shot. No refunds available. Once you've found a comfortable hip fire sense, there are a few other sayings to focus on. First of which are your dead zones. Dead zones are used to counter stick drift, which is when your controller aim moves without you touching the analog stick. And it's not a one size fits all, but it's very simple to fix. Dead zones look like this, and every movement with your stick made within the little white circle will not be registered by the game. But you don't want to set your dead zones too low, as if you have stick drift, it may throw off your aim. The goal here is to raise your dead zone just enough to lower or fully remove your stick drift, but not too much to where the game feels unresponsive and you can no longer make micro adjustments. The way you do this is by going into the firing range and setting your dead zones to zero before letting go of your analog stick. If your aim moves when you aren't touching the controller, then you want to up your dead zone by one or two notches until your aim stops moving when you're not touching it, so you can have the best aiming experience possible. While sensitivity and dead zones get all the attention, the settings for your crosshair itself seem all but forgotten. And with a lot of actions, shaking, or even removing your crosshair in Modern Warfare 2, centering and aiming in general can be a lot harder than it should be. But there's an easy fix. Go into your interface settings, find your crosshair settings, and make sure it's set to static. This will stop it from shaking as you run around the map. But there's one more setting that I don't really see people talk about, and I think it will be a big benefit for anybody playing on a TV or who doesn't sit quite as close to their screen as Joe does. I am sitting inside of my monitor right now and I can't see a thing. That setting is your center dot scale. Center dot scale just increases the size of the center dot in your crosshair, and depending on your setup, you may want to set it to default, large, or largest. But give it a go on each scale, as especially if you play on a TV, it can be pretty hard to see the exact center of your crosshair. And this one change will allow you to feel much more confident in every single gunfight. While good centering and dialing in your settings is truly the foundation of having great aim, it's not exactly going to make you a pro overnight. So for a while, I was stuck. My aim was above average, but not amazing. And while my centering was getting better, my target switching was terrible. Because while I could get on target, it was slow like slower than Modern Warfare 2's sprint speed. So like most people, I tried increasing my sensitivity, changing my class setups, and even looked into control freaks. And while some things like control freaks I still use to this day, it wasn't the change I needed. What was the change that could take me to that next level? Well, at around this time, I discovered someone who changed the way I saw aiming. Or before aim response curves and four types of aim assist in COD, there was someone whose aim truly stood out from the rest. And that was Optic Dashi. I immediately knew there was something he was doing that I just wasn't. And as it turns out, the secret was hidden in plain sight, snap aiming. When you watch any average player aim, they will tend to stay scoped in while switching between targets. And while for a keyboard and mouse player, this is fine, on controller, it's a silent killer. For most people, their ADS sensitivity is slower than their hipfire sense, which makes sense as you want to be more accurate while aiming down sight. But this comes at a cost. When switching between targets, you want precision, but you also don't want to be too slow or your character's headed for an early grave, which is where snap aiming comes in. When you watch top aimers like Dashi and Biffle, they will always ADS in and out while transitioning between targets, which allows them to have a faster sense while getting on target, but the precise aim needed for a long range beam once their crosshair enters the enemy hitbox. Now, while simple, snap aiming truly does make all the difference, and one of the reasons for this is that it's not just for snapping between two opponents. Ever get in a gunfight where the enemy is just moving a little too fast for your ADS sense to keep up? Well, rather than staying in ADS, causing you to get cameraed like this guy, Instead, utilize your snap aiming by un-ADSing to quickly recenter your aim before getting back on target. And snap aiming is easier than ever to practice in Modern Warfare 2. Just head into the firing range and practice your technique against the dummies. Start slow and then speed up as you feel more confident in your shot. It's more about aim than it is about speed at first, but once you get it down, it will truly make a world of difference. But in Modern Warfare 2, there's one extra insight that comes with snap aiming. And you might have seen it. It's called jitter aiming or spam aiming. And it's essentially where while holding an angle, a player will rapidly press their ADS button or their aim down sight button to zoom in and out while holding a pre aim. Now, there are a few reasons to do this, but one of the reasons is just to get more information while holding a pre aim. When you ADS in COD, your FOV will zoom in, which, while great for hitting long range shots, can cause some serious tunnel vision, particularly if you play on a lower FOV. But watch what happens if I jitter aim while holding a pre aim like this on Shoot House. I'm able to hold an angle while making sure I'm not going to get shot in the side. As well tap aiming, I'm zooming in and out, allowing me to widen my FOV and get a bit more information. But this isn't the main reason people talk about doing this. 
and that is for the extra aim assist. While I don't think there is any proof that this will actually improve or reset your aim assist, there are a few things that will give you this effect. One, when you hold your ADS in this game, there's a thing called idle sway which is where your gun will slowly sway side to side while you're just holding aim down sight. This is in virtually every COD, but in this game, it's pretty noticeable. But if you tap your ADS button while holding a pre-aim, while it doesn't totally eliminate this sway, it will reduce it a little, allowing you to get better first shot accuracy. And also while tap ADSing, you're more easily able to snap to an opponent who quickly crosses your screen, which I think gives the effect of extra aim assist. But this technique can also be used in a different way, which I've never heard anybody mention. While you traverse the map, there's gonna be areas like windows that you need to send it to, but not fully ADS towards it, unless you want to be a sitting duck. This can cause a lot of problems if it's just outside of your comfortable hip fire range though. So what do you do? Well, as you tap your ADS button, your sensitivity will actually slow to your aiming sensitivity even if you don't fully commit to aiming down your sights, which allows you to center like this while not being forced to play on a 3 sensitivity. While this seems basic on the surface, this will really help with everything from mastering your snap aiming to perfectly centering onto head glitches as you traverse the map, without having to commit to an ADS when you may not want to. My aim was starting to feel pretty good now, but having the best first shot accuracy in the world is useless if you can't control recoil. And while you can just pull down on your analog stick, that's a little too vague for me. So here's the secret sauce, to recoil control. The cone. Every gun in COD has a unique but predictable recoil pattern, and it's a lot of information to go and learn, which is why people generally just say pull down. And while just pulling down helps with the majority of that vertical recoil, it isn't really what good players are doing. So while someone can't teach you 58 different recoil patterns, I can teach you the one technique that will allow you to get used to and control any recoil pattern almost instantly. The general idea behind recoil control is that you need to move your analog stick in the opposite direction of the recoil. So to find this, you want to take your gun of choice and spray it out wall, anything that will show your bullets. Once you've done this, you want to take a look at the general flow of the bullets, whether they go up to the right or up to the left. All of the extra stuff doesn't matter, just the overall flow of the pan. And you also want to look for the spacing of the bullets. The more separated the bullets are, the more recoil happens at that point in the pattern. Now what can be tricky with recoil is the difference between horizontal and vertical patterns. Vertical recoil goes up and down, while horizontal recoil is left and right. The easiest way to practice this is to separate the two into separate pieces. First, we will do a vertical recoil, as it's much easier to manage on controller, because all you have to do is pull down. But when people tend to try that, it will generally look something like this, as they pull down way too much. But it's much less about moving your analog stick like you would while looking around, but rather putting a slight pressure or weight on your analog stick to try and control that vertical recoil. You don't want to do it like you're about to melee, but just enough weight to subtly pull down on your analog stick like this. It's this constant pressure on your analog stick, which is what I'm calling the cone. The cone is an angle like this, which is how I'm demonstrating the speed that you want to pull down on your analog stick. So the speed that I'm pulling down on my analog stick to track this angle is about the speed and pressure you want to put on your analog stick while trying to compensate for that vertical recoil. Now, to fine tune your vertical recoil, you're going to want to make use of aim smoothing. While not as strong in COD as in games like Apex, it's essentially where while you try and aim left and right, you'll get less vertical recoil bounce. Very similar to if you're tracking a target. So while you can't aim at an enemy standing still quite like this, by strafing in gunfights, you're now giving yourself an excuse to move your analog stick left and right, allowing you to make use of aim smoothing and helping you reduce that vertical recoil. But here's the trickier part horizontal recoil. Now aim smoothing will help with this, as while tracking a target, you won't need to focus as much on horizontal recoil. But in my opinion, the much more important part of horizontal recoil is being proactive with it. If I'm using a gun like this, which I know shoots up into the right, I know I need to be pulling down into the left, just as or even just before I pull the trigger. Otherwise, I'm going to miss my first few shots and be stuck trying to adjust my aim to compensate for the recoil that I didn't account for. Most guns have slightly more initial recoil than they do through the rest of the pan, so it's important to be proactive and adjust your aim accordingly. Now all you have to do is put the different techniques together. Take your gun of choice, find lines on the map like this, and try and track them. While doing this, try and utilize everything from aim smoothing to just putting a bit more weight on your analog stick. And remember to pull down into the right or down into the left, depending on what the general recoil flow of your gun is. And finally, while there are dozens of guns in Modern Warfare 2, don't use ones built like this, as it will be a lot harder to beam people like a pro if you aren't using a class that looks like it was designed by the pros. I really had no clue what I was doing in BO3. 
Now, while up close, my aim was starting to feel Please really good. <laughs> aim assist. At long range, my tracking was pretty inconsistent. And with Season 4 of Warzone 2 gifting everyone 50 extra HP, your tracking has to be better than ever. So, to fix my long range shots, I had to learn from the best. Before Dashi and Biffle, there was the original king. And that is none other than Scump. One of the best Call of Duty players to ever do it. So it's only fitting that from the king himself is where I found out about this next technique. And I've actually been using it this whole video, but you just haven't noticed. Did you see it? I'll play it one more time. I aimed with my left stick, otherwise known as left stick aiming. When you watch players aim, especially at longer ranges, they will tend to stand still, but COD is not CSGO and there is no real aim moving penalty. So to have great aim at long ranges, you need to strafe. Scump utilizes this all the time, but nowhere is it more apparent than in one of the most iconic Call of Duty live comms of all time. Sweat banning 88 and 0. Let me show you what I mean. This oh fight. shit, that guy almost gave me the salami. Watch how instead of using his right stick to center the targets in this crosshair, he instead strafes the targets into his reticle, allowing him to increase the strength of his aim assist and make micro adjustments to his aim well before low dead zones were the standard in Call of Duty. And while up close this isn't as important as it used to be, at long range, it does make all of the difference. When aiming at long range, people tend to stand still like this, letting their right stick do all of the work. But like this, my aim is very shaky. But watch what happens if I utilize my left stick to do most of my aiming. It becomes a lot smoother. And if King Scumpy couldn't convince you, this is what Crowder, CDL coach of Atlanta Phase, has to say on the map. And the way to keep it steady, and I learned this way back in my Call of Duty days when I was a pro player, is not by the right stick, but all in your left stick. So what you want to do is make sure you're going back and forth with your left stick or going one way with your left stick and then slightly using your right stick. It's more in your left stick than it is your right. I can't emphasize that enough. Your right stick is recoil control. Your left stick is trying to follow them. Another way of putting this is the left stick is for tracking and micro adjustments and your right stick is for big sweeping motions and recoil control. On my journey to improving my aim, I've come across a lot of different aim guides. And while they have all helped me improve my aim, there's a few techniques I noticed all the top players doing that never got mentioned. The first of which is jump shotting to create angles. People seem to reserve jump shotting as just an aggressive tactic, but it could be used to effectively open up so many angles. In COD, there's going to be a lot of scenarios where you turn a corner and someone's perfectly placed on the head glitch, where all you can see is the tip of their head. And this is where jump shotting can be so helpful. By jump shotting, you're able to elevate your character model, allowing you to open up the angle and see more of the enemy you're shooting at. So rather than having to hit very difficult headshots, you're able to hit more of their chest and mid torso. So rather than trying to hit impossible shots, Make your life easier and jump shot. Another thing is target prioritization. There are so many situations where you'll turn a corner and there will be two people on your screen. While you may feel inclined to snap on the person closest to your crosshair, this isn't always the best move. You want to try and quickly assess who's your biggest threat. That's the first person you want to shoot at, as there's a good chance the other enemy hasn't even realized you're there yet. A lot of this comes with experience, but just thinking about it as you play the game will improve your decision making much quicker. And the final thing is jitter aiming to close the distance or create space. While I touched on jitter aiming earlier, it was much more to help your awareness and your first shot accuracy. There's another way to utilize it. There's a lot of cases in Modern Warfare 2 where you'll get someone weak, but they'll be able to retreat around the corner. And now you're stuck in no man's land with no cover and two options. You can stand there and hold a pre-aim, or you can try and move positions so that they won't know where you went. Jitter aiming is the best of both worlds, as you're able to jitter aim and hold your angle, but it allows you to decide whether you want to close the distance and put pressure on your opponent, or back up into cover. Now while all of the tips so far have been massively important, they won't exactly change the way you think about aiming. But this, this just might. Every COD aiming guide talks about sensitivity and shooting bots, because it is so important. But if you're already good at it, it won't exactly take you to that next level. With all of the visual clutter in Modern Warfare 2, I feel that it's really easy to lose sight of the most important and top secret aiming tip of them all. You need to focus on your target. Under a lot of aim guides, I see this question pop up. Where do I look? Should I focus my eyes on the enemy or my crosshair? And the answer that I've found for this question is focusing on your target, but not just looking at them, truly focusing. And there is a big difference. True focus will make it look like your enemies are moving in slow motion and are more predictable than ever. Try this. Here is a ceiling fan. If you look at it, all of the blades spinning appear to be a blur. But watch what happens if you focus on just one individual blade. You can follow it around and watch it as it comes into focus. It almost appears like it's slower on your screen. 
Imagine if this is how you looked at your enemies. Tracking an enemy who you're truly focusing on seems a little different to just blankly staring at the screen, huh? Well, this goes hand in hand with awareness, which while on the surface has nothing to do with aim, along with focus is the key to having truly great aim. Have you ever watched a gameplay video and noticed someone pull up the scoreboard for a few milliseconds? And you wonder how they picked up all of the information seemingly instantly? Well, it's the same concept if you have great awareness and know how to truly anticipate an enemy. Thing, if you are expecting an enemy to come around the corner, once you see them, it's going to be much easier for you to snap to them, since you are already anticipating a gunfight. But if you come around the corner and someone jumps out from somewhere you didn't expect, your reaction time is going to be slower, and it's going to be much harder to have good aim. But if you pair good awareness with good focus, it will truly change your aim for the better. And it's everything in this video that took my aim from this. To this. I hope that this video helped you out and thanks for watching.